I bought five of the best solar power banks I could find. Let's put them to the test. For this first test, I'm measuring how much solar energy all these solar power banks collected while they were outside for the past two days. 0 0.86 watt hours, that's terrible. That's about 7% of an iPhone 14 Pro battery. All right, so the second one, 0 0.96 watt hours. After two days, I mean, one of them was kind of cloudy, but still. This one is from Anchor, which is a more reputable brand of power banks. 1.58 watt hours. Eh, this one has four solar panels. Did it collect four times the energy? 6.91 watt hours. Okay, the last one also has four solar panels. Let's see. 8.36 watt hours. That's around 67% of an iPhone 14 Pro battery. Wow, okay, so that means this one generated almost 10 times as much energy as the first one. All right, for the second test, I just charged them all up overnight. Now we're gonna find out how much battery capacity they actually have. Okay, starting again with the Blaver or Blaver, uh, it's consistently one of the best selling ones on Amazon and it has a listed capacity of 37 watt hours. 28.65 watt hours or around 77% of its listed capacity. I know that might sound bad, but I've tested power bank capacity before and let's just say, don't get your hopes up. The Four Patriots power bank is listed at 29.6 watt hours and it came out to 21.22 watt hours, 72% of its listed capacity. Okay, the anchor power bank that I'm holding is listed at 38 watt hours, 27.45 watt hours. So again, around 72% of its listed capacity. So honestly, this first one is starting to look kind of good about now. Okay, so this fourth one has a listed capacity of 143.56 watt hours which is so large that the TSA says you need airline approval to take this on board. All right, let's find out. I mean, we saw this coming, didn't we? 44.04 watt hours, 30.6% of its listed capacity. So it does have the highest capacity of any of these power banks so far, which is a good thing. It's just wildly off from its claim. This last one from Survival Frog, it is by far the most expensive but despite that, it has the smallest listed capacity at 24.05 watt hours, which is frankly disappointing. 14.83 watt hours, or roughly 62% of its listed capacity. That's about enough to charge a phone one time, if that. So these things all have a flaw, and it's hiding in plain sight. The battery pack is attached to the solar panel. And that's the selling point, right? It's all in one. But what that means is you have to put the battery in direct sun in order for it to charge. Mine reached 140 degrees on a day in October when it was a mild 72 degrees outside. And lithium batteries do not like getting hot. You've probably gotten a warning on your phone about it overheating from leaving it in direct sun for just 10 minutes. Solar power banks need to spend hours to days in direct sun in order to fully charge. Combine that flaw with the fact that these things charge slowly as we've seen, and the truth is you're probably, most of the time, not gonna be solar charging them. You're gonna be charging them from the wall like a normal power bank. All right, let's quickly run through the rest of the features. First, charging ports. So this is how many devices each of these power banks can charge at a time. These three, the four Patriots, Anchor, and Survival Frog, charge using micro USB, which is an older and slower technology, so it takes longer to charge them. These two, the Blavor and the Chisa, can be charged using USB-C, which is faster. These same two, plus the Survival Frog, also all have wireless charging which is pretty nice, honestly. And they all have flashlights. Okay, so now, which one should you get? To me, there's a clear winner, 
and that is the Qi Saw. It came in second in the solar charging test, and it has by far the most battery capacity of any of these, even though it's not anywhere near its listed capacity. It's got USB-C and wireless charging, and it's honestly available for a pretty good price. But I said this was second in the solar charging test. What about the one that came in first in that test? That is the survival frog. So yes, it did collect the most solar energy of any of these power banks, but it has by far the least battery capacity, almost a third of the Qi Saw. And it's also by far the most expensive of any of these solar power banks. So I just don't think it's worth it, but let me know if you think otherwise. I mean, I'll be honest guys, I was underwhelmed by these solar power banks. Some people use them outdoors for hiking or as a backup charger for emergency situations. I think those are good use cases for them and they'll probably work okay for those situations. But beyond that, I just don't think they're worth it for most people at this time. I'm hoping they improve in the coming years with improved battery technology that has wider temperature ranges. And I'm excited to revisit them at that point if they do. But until then, I think that's where I'll leave it.